reading a text here for the call to worship. It will be Psalms 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Amen. If you could uh, please continue to stand for number 395. Oh, let me walk with thee, number 395. Lord God, it is with trembling of heart that we come before thee, knowing how that we as sinners, transgressors, really don't deserve an audience on anything that we have done. And so, Lord, it is only by your mercy and your grace that we're able to kneel here, feeling that we have an advocate, knowing that we can come before thee and plead for your mercy. Lord, we thank you that you have experienced all things. 
as a human here, you knew what it was like to suffer and feel pain, to realize the anguish and sometimes the dread that human beings have. So thou art a merciful God that can understand and forgive us of our ways. But also in your love and in your instruction, you enable us to have a new trial, a new beginning. Day by day, we can ask for forgiveness, that you would care for us and help us to start a new day. We're thankful for that. We're grateful, Lord, for that kindness that you have toward each one of us here. So it is with honor and privilege that we can speak to you this Sabbath day and to know that you hear us and to know that your spirit will guide us along and enable us to rejoice that we are those that belong to thee. So Father, we thank you for instruction. We thank you for telling us what it is that we ought to do. We thank you for your comfort and your mercy. It is wonderful to be a human being under your leadership and rulership. So Lord, help us to be willing to give up our, ourselves, our selfishness, our own thinking, our own thoughts, and just to be here knowing that truly God is a God of love and one of mercy. We pray for our congregation this day. We have an interesting message that's going to be presented. And we ask, Lord, that your strength will be with us, that your spirit will be over us and help us to appreciate the worship that we can bring before thee on this day. And certainly, Father God, without your Son, None of this could be true. None of it could happen. And we would not have a future. So we are very grateful and thankful that there was this plan and that your own dear son devised that because he cared for us and realized what a wonderful thing it would be that there would be a large group of people that could be redeemed and that would worship and honor not only you, but also your Father. So we thank you, Lord God, in your name. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning, church. Good morning. Well, this, as everyone knows, is a different place for me. But, you know, the Lord has a plan. And the Lord has a plan for each one of us. And I think that uh, I'll be telling you about a plan that was for me in my life, where the Lord has brought me. And as uh, it says, what steps led to where I am right now at this minute. And this isn't a story about me as much as it is about uh, what I went through, what uh, the Lord has done for me, the way the Lord has planned my life, the way uh, through all the trials and tribulations of my life <clears throat> and the examples that I give, I don't want you to look at it as I'm saying about me, but as maybe you can look at your own life, that you can say, where has the Lord helped me? Where has the Lord uh, continued to provide protection for me? Where has the Lord provided for me? And what the plan was for you that the Lord has you today and is that where you think he wants you? Or where maybe we could be at a better spot than we are? And that's really uh, what my message is about today. But it's, it's about me, but it's for all of us. Just like um, a lot of the stories we hear in the Bible, I feel those are stories that are about a person and not necessarily about bringing out uh, uh, about me, 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 but more about what the story is about, how we can learn from the mistakes of that person, how we can learn from where the Lord helped him or her in that thing. So um, I just have the three parts to my sermon this morning are the plan, 
the provisions, and the protection. So I'll go through those, and I'll be going back and forth probably throughout my life, but uh, I just wanted to start with really who I am and how I was born and come about. Uh, I was 55 years ago. Uh, I was a miracle baby in my mind uh, because my parents were uh, using birth control, and I was there. So right away, I feel that the Lord had a plan. I mean, he said that y'all have a plan not to have a child, but the Lord had a plan to have me in this world. And I pray that, you know, every day that uh, as I get closer to the Lord and closer to his son and their, through their spirit, uh, that I'll be uh, someone that can tell my story, that I can uh, bring out the wonderful things that the Lord has done to me through, our, uh, through what he's done and, and to help them to, on their journey if, if possible. So, and uh, that goes to speak on Jeremiah uh, 1 5, where it says, <clears throat> Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So I'm just, uh, as I go through different things, I look at what verses kind of came to my mind. Uh, when I spoke about different subjects in my life, and I mean, that could be, I mean, what could be more of a thing where he knows where I'm going to be before my parents even knew in the womb. So uh, as I grew up, I was Catholic. I was never baptized. Uh, my grandfather was a very, very big part of my life. Uh, he was a very Christian person. Uh, many people would refer to him as a saint. I mean, he was uh, one of the best people you ever want to meet. He would do anything for you. And I always remember as a youngster, I'd say, why in the world, if he knows that this person did this to him, why is he going to go and help them again? Why is he always going to continue to help, help, help when these people just continually roll over him, roll over him, roll over him? Well, as I've grown in my journey, I see why. Because it's not what we are, but what we are to be for the Lord. So it's just that he was always a role model. He always told me, you know, whenever about drugs and everything, I never got into drugs, thank, you know, to the Lord. And through my grandfather, always saying, just say no. And if they don't accept that, then they're not your friends or you don't need to be with them. So I always kept that in mind because he was always one that I respected growing up and never wanted to, uh, you know, disappoint. So uh, I was married, you know, to skip further up, I was married for 13 years and had a daughter. Uh, unfortunately, we got a divorce. And uh, it was, you know, in my mind, it was uh, not a great relationship. And... Um, so it was, it was the best thing for, for us at that time. So going to 2 Peter and verse uh, 3, 9, 2 Peter 3, 9. <clears throat> Find it back here. I tried to kind of get things here, but it's not. Where's 2 Peter. It says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but in long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And again, as that happened, you know, I repented for uh, my relationship. Uh, for, you know, when you go into marriage, it's a vow. You know, it's, it's a vow to the Lord, it's a vow to your other half. But, you know, as we all know, uh, things don't work out, and sometimes. Uh, it's better, you know, as I said, it's the Lord's plan was uh, that it didn't uh, work out, you know, and I don't know if that was through the, through the devil or through what, but it didn't work out. But I feel, and uh, looking at the back side and looking at where I am today, that it was Lord's plan that that wasn't the thing, but your new life will be better. So in looking into, and that's when I let, met my uh, wonderful wife, current wife, Lillian, and uh, we we're remarried in 2010, and we'll take a look at Proverbs 16.9. It has to say, <clears throat> in 16.9, it says, A man's heart deviseth not his ways, but the Lord directeth his steps. So sometimes, you know, we think that we're in love, and we're young, and that's really not the proper way but I feel the Lord had a direction that he wanted my steps to be. 
And uh, through, through our marriage and where, Stu, uh, where, Kathy, or I'm sorry, where Lillian lived uh, was two doors down from Stu and Kathy, which everyone in the church here knows and everyone online uh, knows. But uh, they were um, pretty much a uh, couple that you could see. And we always wondered, you know, every Sabbath, you know, he was never doing anything. And we'd go out and do our thing. And, but he was always super nice, super helpful, and always just showed a Christian way of life, and we always respected that out of it. Well, um, and 2011, Kathy had a, they had a, Stu came over and asked for a, um, a dish for a cake for Kathy's surprise birthday party. Well, of course, we said, yeah, and it was Sabbath, and we were like, uh, it was Sabbath evening that they were having it, and he says, well, would y'all like to come? And we were like, well, we don't really have anything planned, so yeah, we'll come. So when we went there, if we take a look at Hebrews 10, 23 through 25, it was just a, um, uh, a moment in our life that we just kind of had to look at you know, where we were and the kind of people that we were around. And Hebrews um, <clears throat> excuse me, verses 10, or I'm sorry, chapter 10, verses 23 through 25. It says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without ra- wavering. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. For not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Well, we went to this party uh, it was a lot of his uh, fellow um, uh, Adventist, and when we went there, we were welcomed as if we were a family that they've known for 50 years, and they were always like, everybody there, we were like, man, we left there, and we were like, wow, that is so different. We were like, this is, you know, we go to a church, and we have hundreds of people, you don't know any of them, and the Catholic church, and just, you know, our experience. And so when we went there, everybody was super nice. I met a lot of people who were still uh, very big parts of our lives today. Uh, one of them, he helped, he, whenever we moved up here, he helped me with my mechanics, with my truck. He still helps me today. He saved me uh, several you know, thousands of dollars and, and contributed to my, the success of my business. He's a great friend, and his wife were just great family friends. And they do a lot for the people, and just, just knowing the kind of people that were in that room and the way they interacted with one another, we kind of like looked at our life and said, hey, maybe this is something we should think about. And again, where we feel that the Lord took us to that particular spot to change our minds and the way we thought about religion, the way we thought about the people that we were um, dealing with, the people that we were interacting with. And it just changed our life. I think from that point is really when we changed our life and the way we thought about the Lord just to even know, to see the way the Lord was directing these uh, uh, people. So, um, and then uh, it wasn't a little bit long after that when Stu and Kathy decided, well, they were already in the process of moving up here, and Stu came to me and asked if I could help him uh, come up and help move. I was going to bring Kathy's truck up, and I was going to help him do a few things he had left to do on his his home. And if we look at... um, Luke 21, 21. It says, Then let me which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of its depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter there into. So, when we went, when I came up to help him, uh, I saw, you know, many of us here have seen his home and where it is, and it was just so different from Ocala and the rigmarole we have always been through. So he said, let us go. I said, man, we have got to move here. And I called Lillian, and she said, no, we're not moving there, and you're crazy. But then she came up and visited as well and saw the beauty, and uh, we said, you know what, this is something that we have got to think about. And so, uh, and again, you know, we have wonderful family back where we moved from. So it was a very hard decision. But again, it's the Lord is who we need to make our decisions for us. Where we feel that, you know, the Lord is proper in our life, where the Lord is leading and directing us, where his plan is and not as ours. But 
So we decided to move to Alabama, and we moved up here in 2013. Um, in the church was built. This church here was we built in seven of uh, September of 2000. I'm sorry, July of 2016 is when I've seen like pictures. So I thought it was the picture of the sign out there. So I think it was cut around there uh, when we were finishing up the church and getting into it. But in Matthew 16:18. He says, and the, Jesus says, And I also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So I felt, you know, like when we built this church here, uh, we had left the denomination. We came here to start something different. We were in Stu's house for a little bit. We were in M's house for a little bit. We were just doing different things, and we figured, well, we've got to have a church of our own to bring others to, you know, instead of just a church home. So that's when the Lord had provided this church and a great place to, to do it through many different ways. And so Lillian Dawson and I were baptized on May 13th of 2017. And in Galatians 3, 26 and 27, <clears throat> he says... <clears throat> For ye are all the children of God by the faith of, in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. And I know it was a, uh, like me being not baptized uh, in the Catholic religion, I always felt like something was missing. Something was missing. Uh, Lillian, when we got married, we went up to communion, and she's like, well, really, you shouldn't be taking communion because you're not baptized. And I always felt like, well, why do I have to be baptized? Because I'm still taking and partaking of the word of the Lord and the, and the body of the Lord. But as I know now, I was unprepared. I, my heart, my mind, I didn't know what it was all about. And coming into uh, this, uh, to this denomination here and finding out what it's all about and doing much studying uh, with Stu and Kathy and with the church and on our own, finding out what it's really all about and getting yourself prepared when you're getting ready to do communion, how important that is to be prepared a week ahead of time, not the day of, not come in and say, oh, the church, and I know every week I'm going to go up there and I'm going to have communion every week, you know, when I was in the Catholic Church, and then everything will be fine. But it's all about preparation and about how we need to be prepared when we partake of that and how important that is. So to be baptized was a wonderful experience um, on... Uh, not sure exactly the date, but then uh, later on, I was ordained in an el as an elder. And in Psalms 32, 8, again, just showing like where, if you had ever asked me, did I ever think I'd be up here speaking about the Lord's word? Did I ever think I would be speaking from the Lord's uh, book? Did I ever think that I would be able to do this? Because, you know, as I shared earlier in, in Sabbath school, this isn't me. I don't, uh, in school, uh, they had speech class and as I believe it was Rosemary said, if, or maybe it was Ken said, they would give Mrs. C if we didn't do the speech. We could write it, and she'd give us an automatic C if we didn't come up and do it. And I said, that was kind of my attitude. I would take a C because I knew I could better my grade throughout the class. Just the speech would not be for me. But again, the Lord had a plan. The Lord says, you will be able to have the, um, the wherewithal to come up and to speak to others and to bring my word to others. And it's through my life that I feel like his plan that I can share with others just to say, you know what, everybody's life is small in, in the whole realm of things because the Lord's plan is what we have to follow and that can lead us to uh, the promised land, as we say, to the Lord's house. But in Psalms 32.8, back to that, um, <clears throat> he's, it says, or he has written, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. So I figure as, you know, he has ordained me an elder, an elder, that he has then given me, you know, the reason in my life, the, uh, and not just to be an elder, but that he says, you know what, now it's come time where you have to take a different step in your life, where you have to step up, where you have to be, where you're held accountable in the eyes of others, not just as yourself, but as a member of the church, as a, um, a part of the church, and that, you know, things that you say, 
will be held against the church as well, you know, against, you know, the Lord, you know, because if I'm out here just doing whatever, he's like, oh, he's an elder at that church. Why would we want to be at that church, you know, that building? Because as we know, you know, we are the church, and where we are is where the church is. So again, I want to just be a good representative for the Lord. And let's see, and today, at 55 years old, our Lord has me at the steps of this altar behind this uh, pulpit. And that's uh, Romans 8.22. And Romans 8.22, it says, For we know not now, for we know that the whole creation groaneth and traveleth in pain together until now. Is that right? 8.28. I was 22. I apologize. I was like, that doesn't even sound right. So it says, And we know that all things work good together to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. So I feel, and I hope the others feel, that I'm here for his purpose, not for me or anything that I've done in my life, but just to, uh, that he's brought me here. And it was his purpose, his plan. And I'm going to give you some examples of where I feel, you know, and, and the ways, and the things that have gone through my life, that he, his plan came to fruition throughout this time. So in provisions, uh, you know, as I said, you know, thank the Lord, I was born into a God-loving family. You know, my grandfather, who I was uh, speaking of, and, you know, we went to church with him. You know, unfortunately, my father was a hard worker and always working, so the weekends, you know, as others, as wasn't quite for the Lord, but my grandfather was always, uh, took us there, kind of reminded me of uh, Noni Lillian's mom, always taking the children to church every Sunday. If they were there, they were going. And it wasn't because uh, I went because of the Lord. I really went because of my grandfather. So again, as I've learned, it's not, you know, the Lord had me there for a reason, for an education, for an understanding of who he is and, you know, why he's, what he can do for us and where he is there for us. Then 2 Corinthians 9, 8. The Lord says, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. And again, as I say, I think he just laid out a foundation for me, you know, to know that, you know, the good thing is to come to church. The good thing is to be in the Lord's house every week, to be able to uh, come together and to come together as one, as a family. And I know that, that uh, I speak with Noni, which is Lillian's mom, of course, that, for those who don't know. But she's always saying that if she doesn't go to church on Sunday, that she does not feel right. Something is wrong with her whole week. She has to go to church. And it's not, you know, she has a different understanding. But she knows that the Lord, she, there's one God. And she says, you know what? I know that God, I have to have him in my life every week. So it's just another thing where, as you know, if that's the most important thing in your life is God, that you know that you'll be going in the right direction. Um, I had a job, you know, as I got older, I had a job to take care of my family. Uh, when Lily and I got uh, married, the, you know, we, we had come to an agreement that, you know, with the Lord, we want to be focused on the Lord, not focused on different uh, loans and stuff for a home. So we wanted to make sure that we had a practical home, that things that we could do, that we would basically pay cash for as much as we could of the house so that we wouldn't have that burden of a loan. Well, the Lord says, you know what? You're moving up there for me. You're not moving up there for yourselves. You're moving up there to get out of the cities. You're doing it for come closer to me because he knew what today would bring. He knew where I would be today. He says, you know what? They're going in the right direction and I'm gonna help them out. The two years before, uh, the, the two years leading up to us moving was the most money that Lillian and I both and both and and both of our jobs uh, have ever made and the Lord said you know what I'm gonna provide you uh, the the means to move up here the, the means to make sure that you have nothing to worry about but me and again it, I mean you just look through the things that, that led up to where we were and how we were doing and just to see the way things work out you just you know that it's the Lord's plan. You know it's the Lord working. And again, you know, he blessed us with a home, uh, Lillian's job, she was able to transfer. Uh, I had retired 
But you know, as I said, my friend, he had moved up here, uh, and he had a, a place where he was working, and he brought me on with, with a couple of trucks. Well, it ended up where I ended up working uh, later on. I came out of retirement. But, you know, the Lord provided that job, and that, provi- that job has led into where um, my job is today and how I'm able to uh, take um, my job and my family and the Lord and all of it together to work together um, as not where I'm constantly working or I'm constantly doing anything to uh, take care of our home. And just the way the Lord has provided for us is just, is just amazing. And, and it's not always about money and him providing this, but just the, the footsteps that he's provided us and, and the way that people have come together to help us, you know, and the Lord brings them together, not, not anything that we've done. So <clears throat> in Job 1.10, or the, or the last part, he says, Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. So just to see, you know, like I said, the way that he provided for us before we came up here, so that that would be one thing that we wouldn't have to worry about, that we could focus on other things, and most importantly, on the Lord. Um, Just another example, when we did come up here, I was um, playing Evil Knievel and trying to be a show-off with Dawson, and I was on a four-wheeler, and I broke my shoulder. Well, I was out of work for two months. And when Lillian came up here, she was kind of struggling a little bit with work and, and, and the mortgages and all that stuff. Well, you know, those two months that I was out were the most money she made the whole entire she's ever been here. She made on those two months. So again, what does the Lord say? The Lord says, I will provide. You don't need to need, but believe in me. And, you know, we had had studies, and really that's what brought us up here was with the studies with Stu and Kathy, even when they were up here, you know, the Lord provided Skype so that we were able to do our studies, you know, when they were in Alabama here and we were in Florida and constantly talking about, you know, the way about what we're going to do with our home, about the way uh, that the Lord was going to bring us up here and the studying that we would do. And again, just growing in love with the Lord was our thing where, you know, we spoke about it in Sabbath school where you just don't, you know, it's not really about you can't do this, you can't do that. It's what do you want to do? You know, the Lord has it. If you're, the Lord is in your heart, you want to do things for the Lord. You want to be close to the Lord. It's not where the things of this world are important anymore. Um, uh, in Psalms 128, verses 1 through 4, it is written. <clears throat> Is written, Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Thy wife shall be as fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. Thy children like olive plants round about thy table. Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. And again, I, whenever it says feareth, I always say loveth the Lord. So just to see where he provided for us, how he provided for us, that, you know, it wasn't me who was actually providing that day, it was the, or those months, it was the Lord, and he did it through, through Lillian. So again, just, um, just to see the way he provides and to, when you look back on, you know, I don't want you to say, oh, this guy did no, I want you to look back on your life and look at every single time the Lord has provided for you, every time the Lord has brought you out of a situation or whatever the case may be, and to say, man, if it wasn't for the Lord, where would I be? If I wasn't, if the Lord didn't know that I would be here today or he knows where we're going to be tomorrow, you know, that's what I'm always focused on. Uh, at that time, you know, Lillian was, we were here for a while, and Lillian changed jobs. Um, just, just another miracle in, in my eyes was a coworker of hers. I mean, she moved jobs. And a coworker of her encouraged her to get uh, cancer insurance. Uh, nine months later, uh, Lillian, when we we had gotten it and it was very cheap, and we were like, "Oh, okay. Well, I mean, like nobody really thinks of that." But the most important thing, if I could advocate for the Lord here today, uh, when you are young or whatever, or with the way things are in this world today, and cancer is so prevalent, uh, if you could get cancer insurance. It, the Lord will be providing you a favor if you follow his steps. Well, nine months later, you know, unfortunately, Lillian was diagnosed. Um, 
uh, the insurance, her insurance that she got from that lady has provided a lot of um, alternative medicines and homeopathic medicines that we feel uh, is the reason why she's here today. Um, it continues for, to provide. Every time she goes to the hospital, it provides. It's, a, it's an insurance I've never seen before. And if she would have stayed in the same job, she would have never known about it. We would have never known about it. And it's just amazing. You know, when, when I look back, I look at the Lord did this. The Lord had her change jobs. She didn't want to change jobs. She didn't think it was the right move. She wasn't sure. But the Lord impressed her to go that way. The Lord impressed her. And what did he do? He provided for uh, her family, you know, and for her children throughout that time. It allowed me to be able to be home a lot more than I would have been so that I could take care of her. It just... It's just another thing that you look at and you say, wow, the Lord is in our life. Why would I want to fail him? You know, he doesn't fail us, so why would we want to fail him? And that's just the question I continue to ask myself every time I look back. And I want you to look back on your life, you know, where you've been. Yeah, there's faults, there's mistakes, and we know. But, you know, who brings us through those? Who brings us up and lifts us up out of them? It's the Lord. So, again, i just so thankful. Uh, Matthew 6, 8. <laughs> In Matthew 6, 8, it is written, the Lord, or Jesus says, Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye even ask. So again, the Lord's providing for us. He knows before we even know to change jobs and to do these things. Well, the most important thing, the most important event in my life was James 5, 14 through 15. And in James 5, 14 through 15, as an elder and as a loving husband, I've been called to do an anointing. Uh, Lillian had, um, this was in her first bout with cancer. She had, uh, a, a, you know, we had learned about um, James, and we learned about anointing, and she had learned exactly what it was all about, and she said, she came to Stu, and she came to uh, Ken and myself, and asked uh, if we could please uh, anoint her, and again, as people learn, and people study, that they will know that the sick has to come to the elders, as it says here, and the, for just the proper procedures, for the Lord, so that everybody's in the right mind, so that everybody knows what the intention's all about. And in James 5, 14 and 15, it says, Is any sick among you? Let him or her call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him or her, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up, and if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven of him. Well, let me tell you. Um, we've had a couple anointings in this church, and they're just amazing. Lillian, you know, she's close to me. She's my life. And he's brought her through. You just cannot imagine. Uh, and we feel that when we went to that anointing, we knew. We knew that the Lord would heal. We had, there was no question in our mind. There was no question in the people that were praying for Lillian's mind that the Lord is capable. And that uh, we felt that there was more for Lillian to do in this world than uh, to be gone at that point. So the Lord uh, gave her the wellness that she deserved. You know, and the Lord, the, again, she's here with us today for what? For the Lord. You know, we're here for the Lord, and that's what I pray that you know, every day our step becomes closer and closer to the Lord for that reason. Um, also, you know, we have, you know, members of the church who just, you know, that we've heard before that Stu's mentioned about Dawn and her situation several times and just the amazing things through anointing for her. And then we have this building story. Uh, it's just an amazing journey, the way that the Lord has provided for us. I know you've heard that story before, the way the funds came, the way the land came, the way the building came, the way we all came together, 
And here we are today in this beautiful church building that the Lord has provided for us. And it's only through his provisions that we have this. And the steps is just miracle after miracle after miracle, the same way it was a miracle, a miracle, a miracle, the way he provided for us to come up here. And we know we're in the right place because this is where the Lord has led us. So I just praise him for that. And again, the things that I always look at when I was growing up is the protection. And those were always seemed like if it wasn't for his protection, where would I be? So as a kid, we're all kids, young. I was six years old. I lived in Florida. I lived on the largest, one of the largest lakes, Lake Jessup, in the world or in, in the country. And guess what? It had the most alligators in the country. We'd go and 15-foot, 18-foot alligators. Well, I was probably five or six, and my friend was too, and we lived right on the lake. Our property was on the lake. And we used, you know, as a youngster, I went diving a lot in the Keys and everything. Well, we were thinking that, you know, there's a couple alligators right out there about as far from here to the end of the foyer, or to the foyer there. And we're going to go underwater, and the water is about as clear as this microphone screen here. And there's nothing to see. But we thought we were going to go under and look and see if we can see the alligator. Now, these are like 14, 15-foot alligators. We're 5-foot, and you know what they do all the time. What did we do? We were able to get out of the water and go about our life. To me, I was like, that's just one example of the stupidity of me, but the Lord knew where I was going to be today, and the Lord protected me through that. I, we, we had like this, they had a, a mine, like a sand mine. We used to go and dig tunnels from here as far as we could. I've heard just, it wasn't recently I heard where some kids were doing that, and the sand had uh, caved in and crushed them, and they died. That could have been us. But again, the Lord knew where he wanted me today. And then there was a time when we went down to the Keys with my parents. We had a small boat. We were out in the water. My dad probably wasn't so smart at that time either. But here we are in the middle of a, of a almost like a hurricane storm. To me, it fell at time just praying. I remember just praying on the bottom of the boat. I mean, the boat was crazy. But again, the Lord brought us through it, protected us, and brought us through. Well, then uh, fast forward to my work life. I'm a truck driver, so that's not safe in any, any way. But, excuse me, back to the, um, to the protection of the kids. Psalms 121, sorry about that, Psalms 121, verses 7 and 8. <clears throat> and it reads, the Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. So again, I just look at, you know, the Lord was with me. The Lord was protecting me, and the Lord knew that it wasn't my time. And even all those crazy, stupid things we all do as kids. But again, we can look back and see where the Lord has protected us, where he has, where he has provided for us, and where, again, his plan is for us. But as a truck driver... Uh, I worked at Disney uh, when I first started driving. They have like a, a lot of uh, warehouses and, and things. We go and we deliver their groceries. Well, I used to deliver bakery like 4 o'clock in the morning. Well, we have paperwork, and I had my window open, and there was like a roundabout to come onto another road. Well, my papers went flying everywhere, and I went and I went to grab the papers. Well, before I knew it, I was getting ready to go over the, the, um, the cliff, basically. But I turned my wheel, and I always said, well, I'm not going to turn it too hard. I went, it, the truck went over almost the flip. It hit the step. Somehow it hit the step and bounced back. And I went, like, off into the thing, and I remember just stopping and just screaming. I mean, I couldn't believe that I didn't just flip over. This beginning of my career, I would have been done probably as a truck driver because I probably would have never started driving. But, you know, I said, man. But now I look back on that day, and I said, that was the Lord. He said, you know what? You're not going over. We're going to push it back and protect me from that. There was a time when I was at Frito-Lay coming around a corner in a semi-trailer. There was a bus stop. It was around the corner. I couldn't see. There was a bus from here about maybe like a, a fifth of a mile. But the traffic had backed up from being stopped. And there was a, as soon as I come around the corner, dead stop, and I was probably going about 45 miles an hour, there was a dump truck there. Just boom. I mean, as soon as I looked up, he was there. I was able to, like, just move over. I mean, just basically swerve over and go into oncoming traffic. But the Lord, it was the whole reason why there was a bus stop there, but he was stopped. 
So all that lane was empty. Again, no head-on collision, nobody was hurt, and I was saved, you know. And I just, at that time, you know, I didn't know about the Lord, and I was praising the Lord. And one other time, uh, I was in a trucking accident. Uh, I was actually talking to Lily on the phone. And it was raining, coming down a hill from Georgia, and I was carrying a load of trusses. And I went, and the, the, the dip from the road was probably easily from here to there in just almost the same angle. And a lady was stopped in the road. She had no blinker on, no light. I could just see. It wasn't very far up. And I hit the brakes, and I said, there's no way. So instead of hitting her in the back, I just went off the road, and I said, well, I don't know what's going to happen. I, just, I think I said on the phone, I was saying, this is it, this is it, because I didn't think I was going to make it. Well, there was a set of trees here, and I went off the road, and I just drove it somehow. Well, I didn't drive it. I don't know. The Lord drove it. And I ended up not flipping the trailer, not flipping the truck, driving off into a field. And, you know, I said, Lord, I don't even remember having the wheel. I don't remember touching the brake. I don't remember touching the gas. I don't remember nothing about that except for the fact saying that I'm just going to try and run off the road easy. And that was the last thing I remember. Well, when the emergency crews came, when the tow truck drivers came, nobody could understand why that truck didn't flip. Nobody. And I said, every time I said, it was the Lord was driving. The Lord was driving. You know, I said, I can't take for credit for any of this. It's the Lord who did all of this for me. And again, in the protection, in Psalms 91, 14. And again, I mean, I don't, I'm just putting out there like, this isn't about me. I mean, as much as, but just to show, you know, the way the Lord has led me to here, the way I think of it, and the way maybe in your own life, you know, you can think of like, where has the Lord led me and where am I going? That's the most important thing to me. In 91, 14, it says, because he hath set his love upon me, therefore, will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. And again, just I just don't even see and nobody could see how in the world they could have gotten through that, that accident without him. Uh, there was uh, a trip which is very well known to some and not to others. We had a 2007 Ford Expedition. We were driving, uh, all of us were on vacation. It was m uh, myself, uh, Lillian, my daughter, and Dawson and, and uh, Peanut. Dawson and um, Darian. And Dawson was in his car seat, and Peanut was in the middle, I think. But then they were playing games on the thing. Uh, we we're going on the highway, 80 miles an hour near Tampa on 75, and Dawson tells on Peanut, hey, she hasn't got her seatbelt on. That was always a thing, and we have to have a seatbelt. Oh, he doesn't have a seatbelt on. So we got onto her, she got a seatbelt. It wasn't probably five minutes down the road. The back tire blows out. We go, we're flipped three times. But the most important, amazing part about it was not only that, that the Lord prepared us for that, but the Lord on the bottom of your frame of your truck is probably the most sturdy part of your truck. And we went up about 10 foot onto a tree and hit right flat, just like that. And all that happened, we flipped right back down on the roof. Uh, I was the only one who got hurt. I got uh, three stitches in my finger and a cracked rib, and we just, all the kids were able to crawl out, and we just couldn't believe it. I mean, because any other place, any half a quarter of a second, any other time, none of us might not be here, or all of us might not be here. Uh, so we got out, uh, <laughs> Ray's wife came and picked us up with their thing. We went and got another car, packed up the car, and went right back down. But you know, that was only for the Lord. I mean, we could have not even been there. You know, just looking at that whole situation is just impossible without the Lord. In uh, Psalms 91, 11 through 12, the Lord says, For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Lord, let me tell you, the angels were there every single second of that to stop us. And then uh, one more, well, two more things real quick. One was um, my brother and I, we've been swimmers all of our lives. And uh, I guess it just really, you really don't know, at least myself, I never really feared death. I never really felt like if I went on a roller coaster or if I did anything, I never really feared like, I didn't have that like deep driven fear like I'm going to die or something could really bad happen to me. Anyways, we were, we went to, uh, we were swimming out, my brother Andy and uh, 
Lillian, it was like a whole family vacation, and we were out swimming, Stephanie and I, and Andy, and I think Darian was there, and we said, oh, there's like a, we did this hundreds of times. There was a sandbar out probably maybe 100 yards from the shore that we go, we swim out to that, we stand on that, do whatever, and then we swim back. Well, this particular day was a little bit rougher. The tide was up a little bit further, and I guess we didn't even realize that. Well, we swam out there, and my brother couldn't touch the bottom, couldn't touch the bottom, so we decided we're going to swim in. About halfway in, he's like, oh, I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to make it. And you're just kind of like, well, what are you talking about? You're not going to make it. You know, it's like you've never had that fear. You never had that thought. Well, I mean, he was literally drowning. And you always find it. Don't go there and let him drown you, too. So we were like, like my daughter and I, Lil Peanut and I were sitting there going, it's okay, Andy. It's okay. So we're trying to keep him calm, keep him calm. Finally, you know, our friend comes and he helps and we, we get back in. My whole point of that is like, you really don't, I never re really felt like or feared that death was right there in my eyes. But at that point on, nothing was ever the same in my life. Nothing. I kind of feel a little bit afraid going out where I can't see whenever I go fishing. I feel like um, anything could happen at all times, which is possible. I don't like going on roller coasters anymore. I don't do anything that's like death defying anymore like I used to when I was a kid. It's just like, you know, your whole life changes when you have that moment. It wasn't even me. It was my brother, you know? So it's just another thing to know that, you know what? Today, right now, could be my last second. Where am I at with the Lord? Where am I at with my walk? How, you know, how do I treat other people? Whenever they, you know, when, when, when they need help, how do I treat them? When, how do I treat, you know, my family? How do I treat people? That's what I look at every day since that day. It's a different me. It's like, it's not about what we can do, but it's about what we can do for the Lord. And again, it was his protection. 2 Corinthians 1.9. And this is almost it. <clears throat> Second Corinthians 1 9, the Lord says, But we have the sentence of death in ourselves, that we may that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raiseth the dead. So again, we have to have faith in the Lord. And just again, I mentioned it today in, in uh, um, uh, Sabbath school. It was before Sabbath school, it was in our prayers and praises, and I said, you know, I went, I went to my dad's house, and we went to do him uh, a favor. Well, he ended up, uh, after we finished what we were going to do, he had to go to the hospital, and when he had to go to the hospital, we were like, okay, well, he's had so many problems with cancer and everything else, you know, he just, he, he has all really bad problems, so we went there, but before he went, I prayed with him, and we prayed everything would be okay, and the Lord uh, took him to another hospital, and he had surgery the next day, and I was telling everyone how wonderful the people were in the hospital, and how, you know, to have that kind of help compared to others that don't care about you, which I've seen in the past, where they just, you don't even show them in the room, you don't see them anywhere. Just to see those people really made my dad's experience better. Uh, thankfully, he went through the surgery, everything was fine, but I think one thing that I left out in, um, this morning was my stepmother. She is uh, busy taking care of my father. You know, she's a very important part of that relationship. Uh, any of us that have had to take care of people, she's constantly doing everything for him. Well, she hates to drive, she's scared to drive, but I was there on the day that he had to go to the hospital. I was there, she came, she, had, uh, she was in like a local hospital and they transferred him to Jacksonville and then she came back in her car which she's okay with and it was at night but she asked if I could drive her the next morning over to the Jacksonville hospital and I did and I spent the day with them there in the hospital and then we came back and she was like, you know, I don't know why you're here. I mean, I don't know why you're here on this weekend but I said, Martha, it was the Lord. The Lord had me here. We, we planned on other weekends. We couldn't do it this weekend. We couldn't do it that weekend. We couldn't do it another weekend. But we'll do it this weekend finally. And that was the, this was the weekend that my father went to the hospital. This was the weekend that I could help my mother with him and take her there. And she hasn't been back. I, I got to ask again, like I said, on, on his uh, well-being. Last time he, had, he hadn't had a bowel movement, so he wasn't able to leave. So. But you know, I just, I'm thankful that the Lord put me there on that weekend that I could help her out. And she was so thankful and so gracious, you know, and to see that, I, and, and I told them about my sermon today and, and how I was gonna do it. And they, you know, again, 
as I said, you know, can't believe that I'm up here, but, you know, the Lord has a plan for me. Uh, and I just, I praise the Lord that he was, let me be there in that situation that day. And if I could just read one thing here to finish, it says, this is from the Ministry of Healing, uh, pages 396 to 98, titled Training for Service. Let the youth be impressed with the thought that they are not their own. They belong to Christ. They are the purchase of his blood, the claim of his love. They live because he keeps them by his power. Their time, their strength, their capabilities are his to be developed, to be trained, to use for him. Next to the angelic beings, the human family formed in the image of God are the noblest of his created works. God desires them to become all that he has made it possible for them to be and to do their very best with the powers he has given them. Life is mysterious and sacred. It is the manifestation of God himself, the source of all life. Precious are its opportunities, and earnestly should they be improved. Once lost, they are gone forever. Before us, God places eternity and its solemn realities and gives us a grasp on immortal and perishable themes. He presents valuable, ennobling truth that we may advance in a safe and sure path in pursuit of an object worthy of the earnest engagements of all our capabilities. God looks into the tiny seed that he himself has formed and sees wrapped within the beautiful flower, the shrub, or the lofty, wide-spreading tree. So does he see the possibilities in every human being? We are here for a purpose. God has given us his plan for our life, and he desires us to reach the highest standard of development. So again, he desires that we shall constantly be growing in holiness and happiness and usefulness. All have capabilities which they must be taught to regard as sacred endowments, to appreciate as the Lord's gifts, and the rightly to employ. He desires the youth to cultivate every power of their being and to bring every faculty into active exercise. He desires them to enjoy all that is useful and precious in this life, to be good and to do good, laying up a heavenly treasure for their future life. And to finish, it says, it should be their ambition to excel in all things that are unselfish, high, and noble. Let them look to Christ as the pattern after which they are to be fashioned the only ambition that he revealed in his life they are to cherish, and an ambition to make the world better for their having lived in it. This is the work to which they are called. And again, I just praise the Lord that he has called me to this work, that he has brought me up here today, that he helped me uh, through this experience. Um, uh, I was going to say in the beginning, I guess I can say here in the end, um, that you'll probably never hear another sermon like this from me again because this is my first sermon. So, but anyways, uh, thank you so much for everybody's attention this morning. Uh, I pray that uh, the Lord through my life and through my experiences can help you look back on your own to see where he has worked and what his plan is for each one of us here. That's my main thing with this whole thing. I was comfortable knowing that who I am and uh, where the Lord has brought me and what he's brought me through. And I just wanted to share that experience with you. Uh, and again, just so thankful that the Lord has brought me here and my family and y'all as my family here today so uh, if we could uh, bow our heads for prayer oh heavenly father again it's through you that all things are done it's through your words lord that i'm able to be up here standing to be able to bring your protection examples provision examples but most importantly your example of the plan you had for me lord and where it has led me today i ask that you please be with all of my brothers and sisters that are listening today, that they have a plan, that you have a plan for them, and Lord, that they follow. Let us be mindful of your spirit. Let us be mindful of your path that you have for us. And again, Lord, we just ask throughout this week and throughout the days to come that you continue to have your heavenly spirit leading and guiding and directing in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'm not sure what. And on the uh, rear of your hymnal, we have... Uh, if you could stand for the closing song.
may be seated. Thank you for everyone attending.